Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the relationship between volume, capacity, and weight of water. Previously, I did a video on metric interrelationships, and working in the metric system, it's very, very simple. A cubic decimeter of volume will hold exactly one liter, and one liter of water will have a mass of exactly one kilogram. Unfortunately, in the trades, they also use American and Imperial gallons. So I want to talk about the relationship between the volume and capacity for each of those, and then we'll take a look at the weight of water. To start off with, we'll talk about the Imperial system. There are approximately 277 cubic inches in an Imperial gallon. It's not an exact value, it's just an approximate. If our volume is in cubic feet, one cubic feet will have approximately 6.24 imperial gallons. It's complicated enough that we're not working with nice numbers and we're working with volumes in cubic inches and cubic feet, but to complicate it even further, we have an American system in, in place as well. American gallons are smaller, so if you're using American gallons, you have to understand that there's only approximately 231 cubic inches in a US gallon. And because they're smaller in a cubic foot, you'll have more, you'll have approximately 7.48 US gallons. If we were to talk about that quantity of water, one imperial gallon of water weighs 10 pounds. Therefore, if we have 6.24 imperial gallons of water, it would weigh 62.4 pounds. So in other words, a cubic foot of water weighs 62.4 pounds. If we're working with US gallons, if they're smaller, so that amount of water, we're going to use 8.3 pounds as our weight. But again, a cubic foot of water still weighs 62.4 pounds. Often in the trades, you're dealing with a number of different measurement systems. So it could be metric, which is the easiest, could be imperial or it could be US. Let's take a look at a few examples where we're working with imperial and US gallons. Our first example says a rectangular tank has a length of three feet, a width of two feet, and a height of 1.5 feet. How many imperial gallons will this container hold? How many US gallons will it hold? And if it's filled with water, what's the weight of that water? So our first step is to find the volume. We know the volume of a rectangular solid is length times width times height. So we have three feet by two feet by one and a half feet, which gives us a volume of nine cubic feet. I find the best way to convert volumes to capacities is through the process of direct proportion. So I'm gonna work with imperial first. I know that one cubic foot has a capacity of 6.24 imperial gallons. Therefore, if I have nine cubic feet of volume, I should be able to find out how many imperial gallons I have. I'm gonna cross multiply. So one times X will equal 6.24 times nine. X will be equal to 56.16 imperial gallons. Before answering the next two questions, I want to do this question again. So if I'm finding my volume in cubic inches, I can do it two ways. I can change my dimensions to inches before I start. And then my volume will be 36 times 24 times 18, which is 15,552 cubic inches. And it's worth noting that if you were to change from cubic feet to cubic inches, the way that you would do that, we know there are 12 inches in one foot, but if I'm converting a volume, there would be 12 cubed cubic inches in a cubic foot. 12 cubed is 1728. People have trouble with that because they think I just multiply by 12. 
But remember, you have to multiply by 12 for each of the three dimensions. So we could have taken nine cubic feet and multiplied by 1728. We would get 15,552 cubic inches that way as well. So just be careful when you're converting your volume units. It's not exactly the same as converting length units. Again, I use direct proportion, but this time I'm going to use the 277 cubic inches equals one imperial gallon. So 277 cubic inches is equal to one imperial gallon. So if I have 15,552 cubic inches, I can find out how many imperial gallons. Again, I cross multiply, so 277 times x will equal 15,552. Divide both sides by 277, and I get 56.14 imperial gallons. When I did it using my volume in cubic feet, I got 56.16 imperial gallons, but that's what's going to happen when you're working with these interrelationships because they're not exact values. So depending on which one you use, your answer will be a little bit different. Now let's take a look at the next question, how many US gallons? I'm going to go back to my volume in cubic feet. I had a volume of nine cubic feet, and I know that one cubic foot will hold approximately 7.48 US gallons. So I should be able to find the capacity if I have nine cubic feet. One times X is X. 7.48 times nine is 67.32 US gallons. US gallons are smaller, so I should have more. So, so far we know that we have 56.16 imperial gallons or 56.14, depending on how you calculated it. We have 67.32 US gallons in that same container. And the last question says, how much does the water weigh? Let's use the easiest interrelationship, and that is one imperial gallon is 10 pounds. So if I have 56.16 imperial gallons, I'm going to be able to find the weight. I cross multiply 1 times x is x. 10 times 56.16 will be 561.6. So that's how much that amount of water will weigh. These questions aren't easy because these numbers are not nice even numbers to work with. But if you use direct proportion and let your calculator do the work for you, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's take a look at another example, this time with a cylinder. This next question is going to lead up to the types of questions you're going to encounter in fluid velocity, and fluid velocity is going to be the next video. But you're going to know your capacity in US gallons you're going to know the diameter of the cylinder, and you're going to be required to find height. So volume of a cylinder is pi times radius squared times height. We know the diameter is 10 inches, therefore the radius is 5 inches. We want to find the height. Because we're working with the radius in inches and we want to keep it that way, we don't want to change inches to feet because it's going to be an awkward decimal value. But because we're going to be working with our dimensions in inches, we need to have our volume in cubic inches. This is not a volume, it's a capacity. I need to change that to cubic inches. So let's use our proportion. I know that 231 cubic inches is equivalent to one US gallon. So I want to know how many cubic inches I would have if I had 30 US gallons. 1 times x will equal 231 times 30, which will be 6,930 cubic inches. Now that I have my volume in cubic inches, I can plug that in for volume. So 6,930 will equal pi times the radius squared times the height. So now I only have one unknown, and I want to get that by itself. Two ways to do it, multiply this 
and then divide both sides by that value, or divide both sides by pi, and then divide both sides by five squared. It's up to you to decide what makes the most sense to you. If I were to multiply here and just get one number, it would be 78.54, and then I'm gonna divide both sides by 78.54, so that I can isolate H. That will cancel. And again, I'm gonna use the actual value on my calculator because I wrote down a rounded off value. When I take 6,930 and divide by 78.54, I get 88.24 inches. And I may want to change that to feet, so I'm gonna divide by 12, and I get 7.35 feet. So sometimes you're going to be given the dimensions and you'll have to find the volume, and then you'll have to find the capacity. And sometimes you'll be given the capacity, which you'll have to switch to a volume, and you'll be miss and you'll be finding another dimension. As I mentioned in the next video, I'm going to be talking about fluid velocity. We're going to be doing questions very similar to this. Yeah.